So I was just saying um, tonight's meditation is um, connecting to Mother Earth. So I've written a meditation called I Am a Tree. And not everyone's good with visualization and it is a visualization um, meditation. So if you find it difficult to visualize, don't worry. Just imagine that you can feel it. All right. So let's begin by getting into a comfortable seated position. So if you've placed your feet firmly on the ground or in a cross-legged position, whatever feels comfortable for you, and sitting in an upright position, and now just releasing and relaxing and dropping the shoulders down, and release and relax the jaw and the brow, and gently closing the eyes if that feels comfortable for you, or lowering your gaze to the lap. And we're going to begin by taking three deep breaths together. We'll breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. So let's breathe in through the nose and releasing out through the mouth. Breathing in through the nose, releasing out through the mouth. Breathing in through the nose and breathing out through the mouth, releasing, relaxing, letting go of your day and just coming here to this present moment. And allow the breath to return back to its regular breathing pattern. And just focus on the breath for a few moments now just noticing where you feel the breath. Do you feel it at the nostrils? Do you feel it in the chest? Do you feel it in the belly? Just checking in, following the breath, not trying to change it, just being the observer and allowing the breath to anchor you to this present moment. I know that I'm breathing in. I know that I'm breathing out. In and out. Watching the sensation, feeling the breath moving in the body. Releasing the breath, just listening to the sound of my voice. I want you to imagine that you're a tree. You're a strong, sturdy tree with a thick round trunk planted firmly into the ground. You see your body and legs as the trunk of the tree. And you see your arms and head as the branches that are reaching up to the sky. You have many strong branches filled with many green leaves. You're flourishing with life. And you see the branches and leaves swaying slightly in the breeze, but you also see your trunk is strong and immovable. And feel the freedom of the branches so light and airy, flowing and moving from side to side. And feeling the safety and comfort and stability of the trunk, powerful and still connected to the earth. and moving your awareness down the tree trunk now until you feel 
and reach the earth, the ground that the trunk is attached to. And out of your feet, see thick, solid, strong roots growing and shooting down into the earth. Follow these roots now. Watch them as they spread far and wide. Watch them as they grow longer and go deeper into the earth. Going deeper and deeper. Growing and strengthening and stretching and getting deeper into the ground. Keep following them until you reach the center of the earth where you find Mother Earth. See her sitting there strong and true, arms open wide with a big smile on her face. You step into her arms and she hugs you. You feel a strong sense of coming home, a sense of complete wholeness, of complete love. Take a moment to bask in the energy and the vibration of the earth. Feel it seep into your body, every muscle and bone. And let your cells fill completely up with the soothing, grounding, centering energy. Allow yourself to take it all in, to feel whole and loved. Thanking Mother Earth for her love and kindness. Giving one last tight squeeze goodbye. It's now time to start to make your journey back to the surface, back to your tree. So following your deep, strong roots, following them up to the surface, moving up and up, closer and closer to the surface. And as you reach the surface, you enter back into the trunk, back into your body. You completely reconnect with your body, the tree trunk, and feel safe and grounded. Feel the energy of the earth moving all the way up the trunk of your body, all the way out through your arms and head, the branches of the tree. Feeling yourself strong like the tree, grounded and centered and connected to self, feeling the light and the freedom and the joy. And see your trunk now turn back into your body and your legs return. See the branches turning back into your arms and your head. And just allowing the strength and stability of the tree and the energy and vibration of the earth to fill you completely, allowing this sensation to envelop your body, breathing it in through all of your senses, feeling it encompass your entire body and feeling it surrounding you completely. 
Let's take a moment to breathe it all in. It is now time to return back to this time and place. And in a moment, you'll hear the sound of my bowl. And when the bowl ends, this will signify the end of our meditation together. And you can gently awaken the body and open the eyes. just taking a moment to check in and notice how you're feeling from when we began to how you're feeling right now in this moment and if anyone would like to share you're more than welcome to or Suzanne can start with our topic tonight okay. no one wants to share yeah. I'll share. I have this tree that I walk past every day. And I just think she's a good looking tree. It's really weird. But I just look and I go, wow, it's such a beautiful tree, the colouring. So when you were taking us through that meditation, I was imagining myself feeling that sensation of being this tree. It's just a stunning tree. <laughs> so I really like that. It was really good. Thank you for that. It's very grounding. <laughs> Anyone want to share? No, I can't be you. <laughs> oh, that's I'm, Adriana's saying it felt oh, good powerful for her. Was well, it very powerful? Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah it that's was. Nice. It's very different, isn't it? Because normally we just focus on the breath, but not that I could see a tree, but I felt that presence of being the tree. Yeah. Mm. So, connecting to Mother Earth. It's an interesting topic, isn't it? It's, it maybe doesn't appeal to everyone because it's not the typical. Uh, thing that you talk about in a parenting sort of forum but for Amanda and I it was something that we felt that needed to be at least awakened in us because I suppose we're in a higher level of that consciousness where we're in our parenting journey and we realize that everything is interconnected so we realize that even though we use technology and screens our most grounding effect comes from being outdoors. So we felt that we've been indoors for a very long time <laughs> and we just thought, please spring, allow us to enjoy the outdoors. But you know, even one hour of physical um, exercise, I mean, it's enough for me. Some people might go, well, that's not enough. But that one hour, there's a lot that you can do if you do happen to go outside. So for us, spring, for us means like there's a transition if you've been with this journey on us with us for a while you know if you go back back in may we were talking about rebirthing with mindfulness honoring the self we've done all those topics it's almost like we're coming home to the self but then we realize there's more to the self it's this beautiful extension of nature and mother earth the gaia so we wanted to sort of kick in and create some new habits. What have we learned about ourselves? We've been in this home retreating for many, many weeks. And, you know, for some of us, we're still struggling. But if you've taken this opportunity to do the self-development, the self-mastery, the inner healing, it's almost like, okay, I'm ready to emerge with something new. There's another plane of my personnel i'm ready to um, uplift to go to the next level and this is now new beginnings that you can start to implement not only for your mental and physical but emotional and spiritual so you know think about the earth right you can put your feet in it and you feel the charge like i did that on my birthday i literally just put my feet in the ground and you feel these this natural rejuvenation it's like a reset button it's there, it's, it's free, it doesn't cost us anything to just, you, you not use her, but to go to Mother Earth and say, fill me up with your love, fill me up with your energy to help reset me. And I think it's really powerful, like if we, even when we go on the pavement with our kids and we do that drawing, like remember when everyone was like sort of drawing on the, on the concrete, even that is quite relaxing, you know, it's just, again, just connecting with the Earth 
going for a walk. You know, hopefully when the beach is up and running, we can go back there again and get close to the water. There's beautiful ways for us to say more yes to nature. Because let's face it, screen and technology, it's not going to go away. So we've learned to adapt with it. But if we can say more consciously yes to nature, then we're making choices to step outside and connect with her. And it's not only important just for us as parents, I think it's important for our kids as well, but for us, it helps us to ground ourselves so that we can be more present with whatever's showing up for them. But it also helps our children to deregulate. It's giving them the ability to self-soothe. So if they are getting a bit ratty or feeling a bit frazzled, it's just a moment to say, let's just go out outside. It breaks, it's almost like a distraction. It's a transition. It, takes you into another space where you can let go of the chaos and then just step into that stillness of the outside. I don't know if you've heard of the term earthing, but that's when you, you know, you, it's that simple act of connection that allows that free electrons to be taken up in the body. So earthing is, there's actual science behind it. Like if you've got inflammation in your muscles, or you're not feeling well, just earthing, like putting your feet or even your hands on the grass or some sort of nature, not artificial, but real like concrete or, you know, soil, it naturally charges you and it has this healing ability. And it's interesting because we have relied so much on the pharmaceutical industry to medicate us, but we don't need it. We can use nature to medicate us in a beautiful natural form. And even when you see kids, I don't know, when I was growing up, it was like, put your shoes on. But now I can celebrate and understand, ah, oh, that's why kids run outside barefoot, because they naturally know that that's the way to charge and look after them. Mother Earth is it's their friend. She's not the enemy. So we were the type of generation, put your shoes on <laughs> to go outside. But I noticed with both my kids, we have floorboards and they walk barefoot all the time. Whereas I'm the opposite, I'm a socks and slipper girl. So I still haven't adjusted. But when it's summer, I do love to just touch the floorboards. I love that, that feeling of the coolness. But it's interesting, my son and daughter both will not wear shoes in the house, which is quite good because they're actually switched on. And I love watching cats and dogs and that they just naturally, they just walk outside and they're just chilled. Like they're just calm because they naturally just connect with it. and understand it so what we notice what both amanda and i do we do our blogs and so this is more or less a summary of what we both found i know with amanda she loves to use the outdoors to sort of um, deregulate if the kids are ah. <laughs> she's like let's go outside and just get a bit of sun for me i love my morning walks that's my way of setting the tone for the day and i'm very observant and i loved watching it over the last few days, because we've had a few hot, warm days. Then we had that cold sort of front that just came through. And so <clears throat> even though it's the same walk, it actually looks different every day. And what I noticed this morning, there was a lot of high winds. And I just love observing similar trees as I'm walking, how they, they start to lose this... Um, the skin of the, the tree, right? And I'm, I mean, I'm looking at it and going, it's interesting because you just want to pull it off, but a tree will just let go of its leaf when it has to. And there's no like, ah, oh, like I'm trying to grab you. It just lets go. And I just thought there's a lot of lessons in nature that we don't actually notice. But if we took the time to notice, nature is the greatest teacher, right? It teaches us, I'm going to read it out. So nature is not a way to experience oneness Nature is one because everything is interconnected. So the outer environment mirrors our internal state. However, nature reflects the natural state of consciousness. Look at it. It's this beautiful spaciousness or formlessness. This is the highest, the most potent lesson of the spirit of the essence because it's so still in its environment. No matter what the storm is, no matter what the weather is like, the trees are grounded, the trees stay in stillness. It, there's a wholeness about that we've never actually taken time to observe. Watch the water. It shows us how to flow around things, to move around the edges, the boulders, to move downstream. 
watch the stones. You don't see hard edge stones, they're curved. Why? Because they've allowed that water to curve around them. They've allowed it to take off the rough edges. Look at the sky. It's this open vastness. And you see the clouds. I, I, I remember when I went with Lavinia, we went for a walk and we watched the cloud form and then literally disappear. I was like, wow. <laughs> like, you know, when you're just watching those clouds, they make pictures and then all of a sudden just disintegrate, just like that. There's this beautiful spaciousness and presence about it. You look at the wind, it shows you all the possibilities of being everywhere, nowhere at once. And the earth just teaches you stability. It's that unwavering presence. And the trees, I love watching the trees. They're just like, no matter what happens, they're grounded, they're rooted, they're in it, like they're just present in the moment. And that's powerful when you do these walks and you start to observe, oh, nature is the teacher. It's teaching me all the time, but we've never taken the time to watch, to observe. And so this is where your mindfulness is very powerful because if you can use the outdoors to be your teacher, the lessons are out there. It's always showing us how to be still, to be calm, to be grounded, to be steady from within. Because those trees, now, they don't get caught up in the sun. They just wave, they just wave. And they're always grounded from within. So this whole month, it's, it's a really good opportunity. Yes, you do your parenting and you do all that. But if you can use the lessons from outdoors, I tell you, it just changes your mindset, but you've got to be ready, like consciously present to get that information and accept it for what it is. But a lot of us are just like, we're just rushing. We're on the go, go, go. But I feel that October is a beautiful month now that we're heading into spring to really um, try and be outdoors, whether it's in different environments like hopefully you know we'll get to go beyond five kilometers but if you're in your own suburb there are nice parks and um, you know reserves that you could go to or bike riding but just stop and observe you know and i've been doing this there i've got these beautiful lilies outside and i as i put the clothes out i'm watching each one as she blossoms so it started off with five then i got six then i got eight and there's a lot of different insects that like to go inside and i'm always observing i'm just trying to be present in that flowers, that lily space. And, I'm, and I love watching, um, you know, you can see the geometrics in nature. I don't know if you've ever seen, like everything's got a certain curve and a certain swell. The, is it the Fanucci? The Fanucci? I don't know, there's a certain curve on everything. And if you take the time, you just go, wow, there's so much mathematics outside. It's just, it blows my mind. But yeah, this, this month is about really c connecting to Mother Earth and these resources are available to everybody. You know, she never asks us for something, not something back, you know, just appreciate it. That's all you have to do, but um, be grateful. You know, even with what's, what's still going on, there is still beauty. There is still moments of appreciation and allowing that in um, that we can still do. We still have our own inner power. We still have the ability to use our eyes, use our senses um, and embrace the present moment so that's why we use this topic this month because we know we've got the four pillars well, the pillars are you know self-care and mindfulness and parent with presence but we felt that really it all at the end of the day is about that connection with the oneness of mother earth you know that's the big that's the bigger umbrella isn't it um so that's why we felt that we had to touch on this topic but you know it's it's a little bit of a higher level we just realized <laughs> but you ladies are open to that because obviously you've been on this journey for a few months now and i know adriana's done it for a while so you're ready to hear that yeah but that's why we um yeah we wanted to talk about this just realizing that there's a beautiful part of us that we have to let go of it and just open up to it yeah I don't know if Amanda wants to add any more to that, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess just from my perspective yeah. of, I guess, what does connecting to Mother Earth mm. have to do with parenting? Because, mm. you know, we are a parenting education, yeah. and so why would we use this topic? Because it does yeah. seem unusual. But as Suzanne said, the purpose of it is, is because if we are not centred, grounded, whole, fully accept, fully love ourselves, fully understand everything that is, um, that we're interacting with has an effect on us, 
Mm. You're never going to be the parent we want to be. Yeah. Because what happens is, is if we're on our computers all day because we're working and a lot of us are working from home, so we're working, working, working on our computers, we don't go outside, we don't move our body, we don't do anything for ourselves, what happens is, is we get cranky, we get moody and we start yelling, we start snapping, we start losing it over a kid maybe dropping some chips on the ground, you know, because we just, we can't deal with it because we're, our cup is so depleted. So we know that there's a lot on everyone's plates right now and to do a 20, 40 minute meditation or to go and, you know, spend, you know, lots of time and lots of making effort to do stuff and be quiet and reset and stuff is not necessarily going to happen because everyone's in the house there's nowhere to hide there's nowhere to go and have that time unless the kids are sleeping you know and they're not they're going to sleep later my kids are going to sleep later and then when they finally go to sleep you're so exhausted you just want to collapse either veg out and watch some tv and not have to think or do anything or just go and lie in bed you know and just chill out whatever it might be so what we're saying is is all you have to do to fix all of that is just get outside mm. go and connect with mother earth just spend mm. five minutes out there every day you can spend it hugging a tree you can spend it looking at your flowers spend it with your shoes off and feet in the ground but just get outside and get your kids outside because mm. we've found or i've particularly found my kids are on screens all day because they've got to use it for school and then at in the evening in the after school they would just want to chill out and they want to listen to their music or you know catch up with their friends on their like my older daughter with her friends on her phone or you know or play a game or my other daughter creates all this stuff she that's her, her, her outlet is to create but she has to do it all on you know a screen and so i found that it's just this by the end of the day or as soon as you say okay it's time for dinner or it's just like a meltdown like oh i can't you know let me just finish this i just want to oh five more minutes five more minutes oh please oh please and i'm like no 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 what is going on here they're now becoming so attached to these screens this is what they do anytime they're bored they go to a screen and so i've noticed the best thing to do is get them outside get them outside during the day so when they have the breaks so let's say when they have their breaks okay put your computer off you need to move away from your computer and nine out of ten particularly this week and last week because the weather's been so good as soon as i say that they just go outside they go jump on the trampoline or um even my eldest sort of was outside with my young ones today and she very rarely moves away from her computer during school because she's in high school but um she was out there jumping on the trampoline with the other kids you know and so it's just it doesn't have to be a lot of time it doesn't have to be a long period of time but just having those breaks throughout the day if it's two minutes five minutes and if you're outside and you're on the ground or with the trees or whatever, you're automatically, you don't have to do anything. Mm. You're automatically receiving, you're like releasing your stress and receiving the positive energy from the earth. As Suzanne said, there's a lot of research on this earthing that can show you how it actually all works. And if your kids are all over the place, it's going to do the same for them. And so you don't have to be in silence. You don't have to be, you know, I need my time out because you're already rejuvenating and your kids are doing the same thing and you can be together and enjoy each other's company. Um, so, yeah, that's, I guess, the key here is, is that Mother Earth is a tool to help ground and reset yourself and your kids so that you can build a better connection with each other. And as Suzanne said, the earth of the energy or everything that is around us, we are all connected, we are all one. And when we're stressed and when we're not in a good space, our the vibration that we vibrate, the hertz that we vibrate at drops. And the more that we drop and sit at a lower vibration, that's when illness is created in our bodies, yeah? Because our body's um, immunity drops, our um, ability to um, restore and heal drops. So when we're vibrating at those lower levels, we get sick, we get ill. So now, if you're finding it difficult to look after your needs, you can just sit with the earth and the earth brings up your energy vibration because the earth's at this pure, hurts that is just 
like I don't I don't know what I don't I should find out what the energy is but it's like it's like a, it vibrates at such an energy that it is relieves all stress it allows your body to reset recenter and allows you to then start vibrating at this higher level and what happens is is our vibration goes up and down up and down up and down but if we're spending 15, 20 minutes outside or whatever with the kids watching them run around, what's that's going to, it's resetting our energy at this vibration every day, reset, reset, reset. And so what happens is that now becomes our norm because our body knows, oh, this is what I want to be at. And so as soon as you feel stressed or worried, you start checking in and you're like, oh, I can feel that within myself. Oh, I need to go and, you know, take a bath or I need to go and, have a hide in the car and take five minutes for myself or I need to you know go and sit outside whatever it might be but when you're vibrating at a higher level you don't get sick you've got better immunity you've got uh, and this is not just I'm not just talking about physically ill I'm talking about mentally ill also and emotionally because all of those things when you're vibrating at lower levels, you vibrate at anger, you vibrate at resentment, you vibrate at frustration, you vibrate at guilt, you vibrate at shame. They're, they're those lower energies. When you're in those higher realms, you're, you're at forgiveness, you're at love, you're at wholeness, you're at joy, you're at um, acceptance. So your energy level's different, which means your mood's different, your everything changes so um i guess i just wanted to uh, reiterate the importance of making that time to go outside particularly now because what's happening is we're becoming complacent like we can't go anywhere we can't do anything i'm just going to sit in my house watch tv sit you know i'm just not going to go anywhere and i know what it's like i don't like wearing the mask so i put the mask on and i have to go for a walk and i'm just like oh man this and the mask and my glasses fog up and now i'm just used to it like i'm just like oh yeah it is what it is and i still enjoy <laughs> still enjoy my walk but at the start it was really interesting because when we first had to wear the masks i actually stopped walking because I was like, I, I don't enjoy walking at all. I can't breathe the fresh air. I can't breathe properly. I'm really struggling with this. And then I've changed a couple of masks and I found one that I feel comfortable with that gives me the freedom to still walk. But mm -hmm. it really made a difference. Um, and I guess the other thing Suzanne was saying to me, when I was younger, one of the things well, I used to get, you know, one of the things I used to do when I used to get upset or I couldn't think, I used to always drive down to the beach and sit at the beach and listen to the waves. I didn't realise, now that I look at back at that, that was my way of grounding, my way of resetting, my way of releasing what was what was going on for me because I couldn't cope with it. I didn't know what to do. So I was going to Mother Earth. I was going to nature to get connected, to release what I needed to get clarity around the situation. So have a think back over you know, over your lifetime and have a think back about times that when you've been upset, have you made an effort to go outside in some way? Like if you've gone for a walk or if you've gone down to the beach or, you know, have you gone into the forest or, you know, and maybe had a shower because you want to connect to the water or something like, you know, think about what have you, because some, we do things automatically, like Suzanne said, kids do it automatically. They just automatically run outside, no shoes on, no nothing. Like, you know, when, and I was brought up in the same era as Suzanne was, and it was, get your shoes on, get your shoes on. And that's what I started doing with my kids. I was like, oh, they've got no shoes on, they're going to hurt their feet, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. And my husband, he comes from a family who don't wear shoes. They hmm. don't, none of them wear shoes. Like, you know, they're always walking around bare feet. And I'm like, what is this? Um, and... I've no, like, you know, for me, I've obviously gotten over that. And I noticed like my kids very rarely wear, they don't wear shoes in the house at mm. all, ever. Mm. And they very rarely um, wear shoes when they go outside to play. Like the time I say, when you're on your bike or your scooter, you yeah. need to put shoes on because, you know, if you stack it or something, but even then they'll go on their bike or their scooter without shoes on if they can. Mm. Um, and so, I think they know, like, they want to, I, 
I don't think it's a conscious thing. It's a subconscious thing that it's automated. I go with no shoes because it makes me feel good. I don't really make the dots, but they know. Um, so yeah, for us, we have to connect those dots because we're so disconnected from that energy and that earth. So make sure you spend that time. Now, Adriana, you've written a big message here. Let me read yeah, it. She's loving it. <laughs> she loves the answer. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we, we never really, we haven't, we, you know, all this year, we haven't really talked about going outside and stepping into nature. And I think we, we forgot about it ourselves. We forgot about its importance. And so we we're like, we want to do a whole month revolving around it because it's so important because we found that it really changed it really changes the dynamic with yourself and with the kids when you do it yeah. i think it's like another if you remember i think i mentioned it a few months ago it's another form of mothering isn't it because we're nurturing we we nurture our garden we nurture nature and it gives back so it's that constant give take give take and it's yeah it's 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 a it's for kids it's a very natural thing it's like you said there's no fear they just go but adults as we've got older we've we've we got fear and we you know i i love the indigenous people because they just don't wear shoes so it just that's it it was always that way but we got industrialized and we started to put on shoes and we lost immediately the contact to mother earth but all the indigenous and the tribes they don't wear shoes <laughs> they just stick to nature so it just shows it was always there, but we, we created a disconnection on purpose for some reason. Yeah. And and also those tribes, they use nature yeah. to, as medicine, you know. They use nature as medicine. We've forgotten how we can actually hear, heal ourselves through the earth and the plants and what they are, you know. But one of the big things I use now is essential oils because it's like a little bottle of a lemon tree that I've got and, you know, or whatever oil I use. But, you know, finding ways to bring nature into our lives when we're not, not, not spending as much time out in it because we have to be at work and it's an indoor space and there's no natural light and stuff like that. It's finding, find, it's knowing the value of spending time in nature. So making sure it's part of your day, like you diarize it in your day, you like put a note on, okay, you know, a, an alarm on your phone. Like we talk about the self care and putting alarms on for that. This is another one that you can start setting setting time for in your day to to really um, I don't, you know it doesn't even have any words. You know when you go outside. Like one of the biggest things I found was when I went I went to the Peninsula Hot Springs for the first time. I don't know a couple of years ago, and. I went and I loved it. And so I took my kid, I took my kids there and I was like, oh, you know, it's not really for kids. You know, we're going to be here for five minutes and then we're going to have to leave, you know, because kids get bored so easily. And I'm like, oh, it costs so much money. And I'm like, oh, no, let's go. Let's try it. We've got to try these family things. They didn't want to leave mm -hmm. because the energy and the vibration there at those hot springs mm -hmm. is so grounding and centering you just feel whole and complete like when i leave that place i never i feel so full i don't know yeah. how to explain yeah. it like, it's, it's just, you, don't, you drop you drop into the body you just like yeah. ah. it just okay. and so when i do things like that and spend those time in those those types of places particularly with the kids and i see the change in them and their behavior i'm just like wow you don't need to do much to support ourselves and support our kids mm, yeah i mean we amanda and i we always do family holidays just before christmas it's like our pre-christmas getaway mm. so we just sort of spend we try and do two three, two nights two nights and three days and the last one we went to was near the beach and so we found the beach spot and i remember amanda and i were just sitting in the shallow water we literally started what mid-afternoon we went through sunset and we were just happy to just you know what in the water and the kids were playing and you could see the sun and i was just like this is just divine this is it this is there's nothing else that matters right now just being here together in this environment it's just it was just beautiful it was priceless you couldn't even there's oh it was just amazing so what we found that 
when we do do holidays near water, it works really well because the kids naturally are drawn to the water. Uh, and even where we were staying, it was just surrounded by trees and it was just beautiful. So I think, you know, when we can start to go away weekenders, it's just really nice sometimes to just drive out of Melbourne and watch the landscape and just walk into forests and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's definitely something you just come back home so different. Yeah. Let all your worries now. How are you doing there, Jim? You want to add anything? How's life? <laughs> Have you been getting outdoors? <laughs> like, <laughs> he's on mute. <laughs> yeah, um, sorry. Um, I, yeah, we have been actually. Good. I feel like, um, I guess since the awareness has happened, like a couple of months ago, we've been, I've been going out, out, side in nature more than I have ever. Mm. Like now I have like a greater appreciation for nature. Whereas before, like with my parents, I was the same, like wear shoes. <laughs> Don't touch anything. Everything's got germs. <laughs> put on your jacket. Put on your jacket before you go out. Don't want to get cold. <laughs> um, don't go outside in the sun for too long. And you know, all the time, just wash your hands. And so I grew up like, oh, nature's scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even when I was raising Dylan, I was the same. I was like, Dylan, wash your hands. Don't put that in your mouth. Mm -hmm. and now I think because the awareness has happened, I'm totally different with Caleb. And he like crawls around the grass. He eats the bark. Mm -hmm. And I was not like that at all with Dylan. I was, yeah. it's just so funny how like, it's just like shifted. Mm. Yeah. That's good. That's yeah, good. no, I, I need to laugh about it. You know, just yeah. have fear about it, just because it is. It's funny how we were raised with this yeah. scarcity and limitations and fear. It's all fear-driven, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we can laugh at it. And go, well, that's the unconscious, right? <laughs> Get over it. It's, yeah, and I think that's the hardest thing is is because, particularly our generation, we've been we've been told that the outdoors is dangerous. It's to be feared. So we don't want to venture out and we don't want to take our kids out there. But as you say, when you have this awakening, it completely changes. You don't see it in that way anymore. Like, you know, there was, you know, there's dirt in my backyard. It's not full, like, we, cause we've been doing renovations. So the yard's not really safe, but I'm just like, you know what? They, if they hurt themselves or they, you know, whatever they do, we'll just, you know, what can you do you can't protect them from everything they've got to learn also and you know they have to be able to enjoy being outside because we, i don't want them to live in the same fear that as you said like you did jen because i was the same way you know put your shoes on put your shoes on don't touch anything don't put anything in your mouth you know i i, I get that 100 percent. so you know and everyone here is laughing because they know <laughs> It's true. That, that's what it is. That was what we were taught. So, yeah, it's it it it, it just makes life so much easier to let go of that stress and to, you know your kids. And you'll notice Caleb's immunity is going to be so much stronger and higher than is. What's your other son's Dylan. name? Nick. Dylan. 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 Sorry, Dylan. I should remember that Dylan. <laughs> Dylan. Dylan. Um, then Dylan's because. He's been allowed to the natural, um, you know, bacteria and stuff from the earth. It's 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 very good for our gut lining and our immunity. And like we don't realize that we just hand sanitizer and poison poisoning first children. It's counterproductive. <laughs> it's going to be counterproductive. Yeah. Sanitizer. So you'll probably notice a difference in you know mm -hmm. in their immunity during winter and stuff like that because of. Mm -hmm being able to play in those environments and stuff. And you'll notice now that you're not you're not being so strict with Dylan because he's now starting to get into that and those types of things, he will have better immunity too. Um, but yeah, it's it's really interesting how we've been raised and then how that affects our parenting because we don't realise all the little things that affect our parenting and this is a really big one. Um, that a lot of us have fear around oh my child's gonna get hurt that outdoors is dangerous where it isn't yeah and then, then those childhood patterns are actually coming up in our parenting today so well done that you've identified oh my goodness i was raised in that and then you can consciously cut it you just go oh that was it that was mine but that doesn't have to be my children's you know you you cut the ties you know and change your ways but yeah it's powerful good on you <laughs>
and Adriana, so you love going to the beach and you just love it. You just feel very connected and recharged. Yeah. That's cool. Have you been going out, Adriana, since you've been out? Yeah. Yeah. And how are you, how are your boys going through? Are they are either of your boys at school yet? Uh, yes, one of them, uh, Juan. Yeah, he's attending a uh, grade one. Mm -hmm. and Matthew, he's a kinder, but he hasn't been. Uh, he hasn't wanted to do much yeah. uh, in the work, and I've been. I just wanted to be uh, respectful, like do not pushing him because oh. if I add that stress on on him plus the lockdown, it's been very hard for 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 both of them. Yeah. Um, like they're missing their friends while we kind of live. And we explain them and about the restrictions, yeah, in simple words. Yeah. And they say, okay, okay, but deep inside of them, uh, they would like to see their friends. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. We just cannot do that at the moment. So yeah. if I, um, I do the, propos the proposal, like I tell him, okay, let's sit down a little bit, let's practice. Mm -hmm. But the other one, he's been like, no, I prefer to play. Yeah. Well, kinder is about learning through play. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't worry too much. No, yeah, not at all. Not at all. And and Juan is he's doing great at school. Mm -hmm. That um, how can I say like uh, that hard in that perspective in that respect? Mm -hmm. Um, is he going? Totally different from my um my parents. They they used to be very hard in terms mm -hmm. of and grades and everything mm. and and I've been very supportive and understanding like respecting the process their learning process their rhythms their times like um, and I've been in, in constant um, communication with the teacher as well mm. Mm. doing great he's doing fine yeah like nothing to worry about like it's been good it's been good yes yeah. yeah yeah and whenever we have we have the chance i tell them let's go outside yeah mm -hmm. 30 minutes but please let's go outside when because when i we go outside i feel much better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. like it, it it really makes us feel better good and Yes, and we go outside and we can notice the difference. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, it's there. Yes. And, and, and they notice it. I, I mentioned it to them as well. Like, haven't you noticed how you feel right now after we got out of the house? Mm -hmm. And they were like, yes, mom. And on the first day of uh, spring, we went outside and we were, we were like um, seeing the flowers. Mm -hmm blossom around and they were just like ah oh, in awe like amazing yeah. yes and that's what you can do your teaching outside <laughs> it's very simple but it's powerful yeah yes yes so like we haven't been outside every day because sometimes they say no we don't want to go outside yeah we want to stay and I say, okay, I, I respect that. I don't want to push them. Like, no, we have yeah. to. Then they, they won't enjoy. Yeah. What about, do you go outside? Yes, if, yes. If, if, if they say no, I say, okay. <laughs> if I have the chance to, mm -hmm. you know, to get, to get my husband or, or my mom to look after them. Yeah. And then I'll go. Like, but even, even just going out in your backyard, some, mm -hmm. what I find is, is that if I go outside, if I, wherever I am, my kids try and find me and be with me. So if I'm outside, they don't want to come outside, but because I'm out there, they want to be with me, so they'll come outside. So it's, I guess it's a, a way to, I don't want, like the kids saying, I don't want to go outside. I just, okay, well, there's no screens. Mm -hmm. There's no screens at lunchtime. You don't have to go outside. It's up to you what you want to do. And then I just take my lunch and go and sit outside and order them at, one at a time, they all suddenly are right. outside <laughs> and then they're jumping on the trampoline or, you know, running around in the backyard or whatever. So um, 
if you can model the behavior, like saying, okay, no problems, that yeah, there's no point in forcing them. You're 100% right because then they're not going to enjoy it. Um, but if you can model the behavior and go, okay, no problems. Well, mummy's going outside. I'm just going to sit in the, in the garden and have my cup of tea or whatever it might be. Hello. Oh, my internet connection is unstable. Yeah, it was a bit distorted before. <laughs> yeah, the good thing is that we've, we've got a, a big a backyard mm. and they love being in the backyard. So we've got a sand pit mm -hmm. yeah, and the fresco is not that big, sort of like small size. And the sand pit mm. is under the roof, is in the alfresco area, but all of the sunlight is just... Um, like face all that area where the sand pit is yeah so it's really good that they are playing with the sand and yeah. at the same time they are receiving that sun bath mm -hmm. yeah they, they they seek for the sunlight it's like yeah. they know like in, in instinctively like we need that 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 light. Boost. It's like a natural, yeah. yeah, it's like an energy booster. And they go and, and, and at the same time they are playing. Mm. So, yes, and I take the times and I go outside as well to the back and um, the backyard and take a sun bath as well, like 10, 15 minutes. It's really nice. Yeah. So as you said, like even though we don't actually get out of the house, at least we go outside. Mm. Um, even if it's raining, uh, I think two weeks ago or three weeks ago, if I'm not wrong, when it was raining, I like, I told them, look, it's raining, let's go outside. Like in that sense, they don't relay like, okay, we'll go outside if, if it's only sunny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just to, uh, to let them know that there is beauty. Mm -hmm. In the rain, in the rain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a, we called so we grabbed our jackets, gum boots, and we went outside to the uh, fresco area. We just to watch the rain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's good. Guys, it's, it feels good. Yeah. yeah. And it's showing them too, like just because it rains, it doesn't mean you can't go out. Because you yeah. know, it's like, oh, it's raining today, we can't go out. <laughs> you know, so it's. It's breaking that condition, that old paradigm. It was like that. Mm. Uh, it was raining or too cold, never mind. Yeah. Go outside. Yeah. But, but um, um, I decided just to change that mindset, mm. providing them that um, different point of view because mm. they were learning from me. So they were mm. going to create ideas. It is a good day just because it's sunny, but it's exactly it's yeah. You don't let the weather determine your mood. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And when I realized that, I like consciously started to um, changing uh, mm. thinking and and acting and behaving in that pers perspective. Yeah. Oh, they, yes. They okay. Good. Let's go outside, even if it's raining. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good on you. Yeah. Good. <laughs> what else is this? 8.41. Have we got, it goes till 9, doesn't it? Yeah. So I guess is there anything yeah, else anything that you want guys want to talk about or discuss? Obviously, because there's less people on, there's probably less questions. So if you guys want to finish early tonight, we can. Or if there's something else you wanted to ask us about, we're still we're available till 9. So it's up to you guys what you want to do. I'm, I'm fine. Well, they are ready to go to bed. They are reading some books and uh, after that, um, they are doing some gratitude. Mm -hmm. with all of you. So, I'll be fine, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you got it all sorted. <laughs> go and sneak. Don't go up there. Just have a five minutes to yourself. Enjoy it, yeah. Have a cup of tea. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> You pretend you're still up. Put your headphones on and pretend you're still on the call. <laughs> how, are you go how are you doing with your reading, Jen? What book are you reading at the moment? Um, I'm listening to an audio audio book. Yes. 
one. It's have you heard the Book of Mastery from Paul Selage? No, I haven't heard that one. No. He's also, um, it's like it. He he. It's like a channeled text. Oh no! Oh wow! But it's really good. Good, good. It's so exactly the teachings are exactly the same as um, A Course in Miracles. Right. Nice. Yeah, that's good. You look like you've come a long way from when we met you. Yeah. Back in March. Yeah. Just <laughs> Your journey has just been phenomenal. It's shot. It's yeah. Been listening to a channeled text or anything like My friend was telling me about it at the start of the year and I was just like, all right, okay. And I wasn't ready to hear it. And yeah. then I told her I was like listening to Abraham Hicks and she was like, I told you about her at the start of the year. And I was like, Really? I didn't know. <laughs> you weren't ready. Yeah. 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 I know Suzanne introduced me to Abraham Hicks and I'm like, I can't listen to this. This woman, because she's like, <laughs> and I'm like, man, I am not in that vibration of whatever the hell she's on. Don't, don't send her my way. I can't listen to that. And then it must have been a couple of months later, something must have popped up on my news feed or something. And then I listened and I was like, Oh, okay, I can hear what she's saying now, so I'm obviously ready to hear her message. You must have raised another but vibration. At the, when level. Suzanne sent it first to me, I was like, "This is actually giving me a headache." It was just <laughs> like I couldn't, I couldn't listen, I couldn't concentrate to what she was actually saying. I could not hear, and I obviously wasn't ready to hear. And it wasn't until I obviously needed to still do some work before mm -hmm. I could hear the messages she was sending. That's really interesting. How someone might have told us that two years ago, or two months ago or two weeks ago but like it was like I don't even know what you're talking about you're speaking another language and then all of a sudden <laughs> something clicks for us and, like, and then we say back to them oh have you heard of this person and I'm like, what are you talking about, I'm about it. yeah so yeah. what's your one I might jot it down what's the name of him um Paul Paul s-e-l-i-g yeah. he's got really beautiful teachings very similar to um A Course in Miracles Oh, cool. Yeah, because even that book, I mean, I don't think I was ready for that two years ago, but now it just resonates, you know, because it is, you're at a different understanding mm. and consciousness, I think. You know. yeah. Are you reading any books, Adriana? Any books that you're reading? She's frozen on us. I can't see her moving. <laughs> yeah, she has frozen. She has Adriana, frozen. are you there? Are you there? Are you reading any books? Yes, no. <laughs> I don't know if she can hear. <laughs> we couldn't hear you. Tell yes, us again. No, <laughs> she's cut out. Again. Type, type in the chat. Um. Well, I'm reading. Say that again. <laughs> we heard. We heard the words. I am reading. And I'm reading. Oh, no, <laughs> I'm going to cut out. Book. <laughs> Interestingly enough, I I haven't I haven't been reading it, but I want to get it again because I used to re I've read it a couple of times. But there's a book called The Celestine Prophecies, oh. and it's um it's it's got it's got it's got nine insights, and so it's this story. It's like a story, but it's a story of a journey of this guy finding these nine insights, and so oh. each insight is I like that one. That sounds interesting. Is like an awakening and a remembering of who you are and coming back to yourself oh. and understanding, you know, um, your energy and how energy works and stuff like that. So, but um, so I've been thinking about this book for some time, and then something happened and it popped up somewhere and I was like, Oh, okay. And then the other day I was on a, um, I was on a, uh, what do you call it? A online group. And it was like, a, it was, uh, a learning to speak to your spirit guides or something like that. It was. And anyway, the lady who was doing it, she mentioned this book again. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, you obviously need to go get the book again. But she then said to me, uh, which I'd never realized they've done a movie of the book, very like a quick yeah. condensed version. She goes, yeah. you just Google it and you can find it on YouTube. So I went book? on the Celestine prophecies, Celestine <laughs> prophecies. Now the movie, cause I did watch it the other night is very seventies, eighties, oh. <laughs> but, and, but it actually, and it's like a, like a condensed version of the of the book so it's got it's like moves much quicker and it doesn't mm, really go into the, the prophecies scene. in detail 
but it actually was good like as an overview of the book to okay. sort of like like a like a long overview of the book and it just did the it sort of hit on them really quickly and then at the end what 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 it's leading to and so it was actually nice to sort of revisit because i've read the book revisit it through the movie to sort of see it in in that respect type thing but mm -hmm. um definitely a really interesting read um lots of stuff to think about about self and self-development and growth and how you're you're interacting with other people's energy and a lot of the time when we're angry or frustrated, it's because we have um, our energy levels are low and we're feeling um, lack of control. So what we do is is we uh, we get bigger. So anger and stuff that's a bigger um, energy. It's an energy stealer. Both mm. emotions, and so we try and steal other people's energy. And so that's what we're we're doing when we're expressing those emotions, trying to steal energy to help us feel whole and connected mm. because we are not looking after our in internal self. We're not looking after our, um, what we should be doing internally for ourselves. So when we can fill ourselves up from the inside, then we don't steal other people's energy. So it's just really, so it talks about those different insights and stuff, which is really, which was really, I I knew them, but I sort of, it was great to sort of revisit them and remember them. So yeah, but yeah, the book, I remember reading the book and I was like, oh, I like, you know, some books you just can't put down. It was one of those books. Oh, I need to know what the next insight is. I need to know what where this is going type thing. Um, I remember reading it. So it was nice to sort of revisit with the book, but I'm going to, I thought I had it, but I've actually, I think I must have bar lent it to someone and it's never returned really and um, <laughs> yeah so I'll have to buy it again but yeah they yeah. definitely recommend that it, as a reading when you get time yeah now Ray Runner, she what was her book no, no drama, drama discipline yeah. and I'm waiting oh Maggie's dense book you've got which one run. have you got are you ordering the mother in our boys or boys to men Adriana which one are you getting <laughs> You're gonna type it in. <laughs> is, is it mothering? Mothering? Are oh, you getting yeah, mothering? mothering boys? Boys. Yeah, I've done that one. That's a right one for you to read right now mm -hmm. with your boys. I had that one. I've read it, and I've sort of passed that stage. But it's good, like when we want to do a course or whatever, we can think about those those ideas. But I've just got now today from boys to men. So. That's the teenage years. And I watched her interview yesterday. It was quite good. Yeah, but she's definitely saying, like, since we've been home, it's like 40% increase of screen time. And it's not good for our boys because, like, you've all got boys here. They need to be outdoors. It's natural for them to be outdoors. And she just said, yeah, it's just, it's a different style of teaching. We're very, it's all about academic. But in her day when she was a teacher, it was a lot different. She used to go out there and kick a ball with the students, you know, spend more time outdoors because that's where she found you get the best out of the boys, especially with their personality. So, yeah, I think you'll enjoy Mothering Our Boys. It's very well written. <laughs> well, there's anything right. else anyone wants to share? Otherwise, otherwise we'll wrap it up. We can do our meditation song, our mantra. Uh, let me find it. Uh, I need to share my screen. Where are we? Here we go. Alrighty. Okay. Oh, what? Um, I might just mute everyone so you can hear the mm. music and sing along. The words will be there. You can hum along, sing along, and remember the first. Um, the first. Uh, verse is a blessing for yourself the second verse is a blessing for your children and the third bless us um, verse is a blessing for your relationship with your child all right now uh, we're gonna now why doesn't it oh here we go may i be conscious in all my actions May I be wise in all of my responses. May I be filled with love and kindness and compassion. May I be better connected to myself. May you be conscious.
conscious in all your actions. May you be wise in all of your responses. May you be filled with love and kindness and compassion. May you be better connected to yourself. May we be conscious in all our actions. May we be wise in all of our responses. May we be filled with love and kindness and compassion. May we be better connected to each other, one another.